steel is not just a material. It is the foundation on which modern civilization is built. From the cars we drive, to the skyscrapers that shape our cities, from the bridges that connect us, to the tools and machines that power industries, steel is everywhere. It is the backbone of modern infrastructure, an essential material in everything from household appliances to energy production and even medical equipment. That's true, Mia. But there is a significant downside to steel production that many people don't realize. It is one of the most energy-intensive industries on the planet. The traditional methods of producing steel rely heavily on coal and emit massive amounts of carbon dioxide, making the steel industry responsible for around 7 to 9% of global greenhouse gas emissions. In recent years, there has been a promising shift towards green steel production. By using renewable energy sources and hydrogen instead of coal, the industry is starting to transition to a more sustainable and low-carbon future. Do you know Liam? Recently, researchers from the University of Oxford used a machine learning model to explore the global potential of green steel production. They focused on one of the most promising methods to decarbonize primary steel production, using green hydrogen to reduce iron ore, followed by steelmaking in an electric arc furnace. By analyzing over 300 locations with a combination of optimization and machine learning, they found that renewable-based steel production could be competitive in areas near the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer. Interesting. I had no idea. But what's so special about these regions? Well, these regions benefit from excellent solar energy, additional onshore wind power, high-quality iron ore, and lower steelworker wages. If coking coal prices stay high, fossil-free steel production could become competitive in the best locations as early as 2030, with even more progress by 2050. Careful consideration of factors like the availability of suitable iron ore, land, and water are vital. Yeah, the green steel production is really picking up steam. Several startup companies are in the race, focusing entirely on creating sustainable steel. In the USA, Boston Metal has developed a process called molten oxide electrolysis to produce steel without using fossil fuels or hydrogen. This method uses electricity to convert iron ore into molten iron at high temperatures, emitting only oxygen as a byproduct. Powered entirely by renewable energy, it offers a sustainable way to make steel. Electra, a company based in Boulder, Colorado, USA, started in 2020. It is shaking up the steel industry with its super cool low temperature process. Instead of needing hydrogen or high heat, they use renewable electricity to refine iron ore in an electrolyte solution. The process is focused on electrochemical reactions to produce iron, all at temperature below 100 degrees Celsius. It's a huge step toward making steel production greener, and honestly, it's pretty exciting to see how this shift to sustainable steel is picking up speed. You know Mia, in 2020, H2 Green Steel was also founded in Sweden. This company uses green hydrogen and renewable energy to replace coal in steel making, aiming to reduce carbon emissions by up to 95%. In France, Gravity High is developing hydrogen-based iron production integrating renewable energy to decarbonize the process. These efforts are part of a larger global push toward green steel, where companies are racing to develop innovative solutions that balance the growing demand for steel with the urgent need to address climate change. It's inspiring to see how these startups are not only transforming traditional practices, but also setting new benchmarks for sustainability in the industry. Yeah, traditional steel production happens in two main ways. First, we've got the blast furnace route, which is used for primary steel. Then, there's the electric arc furnace route for secondary steel production. The blast furnace route has been around for a long time, but it's very carbon intensive because it relies on coal. The main process here is called reduction. Iron ore is basically iron oxide, and to separate the iron from the oxygen, carbon is used. But this creates a massive carbon dioxide emission, and that's a big problem. Exactly. That's why there's been so much focus on making secondary steel with electric arc furnaces. These are different because they mostly use recycled scrap steel, which is way better for the environment. They melt the metal using heat from electric arcs created by graphite electrodes, 
making the process cleaner and more flexible than the old-school blast furnace method. In Europe, over 40% of steel now comes from electric arc furnaces, which is pretty impressive. Even though secondary steel has a smaller carbon footprint, the world still depends a lot on primary steel. But green steel production is definitely shaking things up. Right now, the big traditional steel companies are making huge strides towards sustainability. Germany is really pushing toward this transition. ThyssenKrupp, for example, is investing $2 billion into its TKH2 steel project to build a hydrogen-based direct production plant at its Duisburg facility. The production is expected to start by 2029. Salzgitter AG is making strides with its Salcos program, focusing on hydrogen-based production processes. They've started building their first direct reduction plant, and they've secured renewable energy and hydrogen supply partnerships. Their target is a 95% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions by 2033. It's exciting to think about the future of green steel and the efforts being made worldwide to transform the industry. ArcelorMittal, based in Luxembourg, is investing heavily in hydrogen-based reduction technologies to significantly reduce emissions in its steel production. In Austria, Vestalpine is leading the charge by transitioning its steel plants to hydrogen-based production while integrating renewable energy sources such as wind and solar. Their flagship project, H2 Future, is one of the most advanced pilot plants for green hydrogen production in Europe. It serves as a model for large-scale sustainable steel production. Over in India, JSW Steel is expanding its green initiatives by incorporating hydrogen and renewable energy into its processes. They are also working on improving energy efficiency and using waste heat recovery to further reduce emissions, showcasing India's growing role in the global shift to sustainable steelmaking. Essa Steel, also in India, is developing a green steelmaking roadmap that involves using hydrogen and advanced technologies to achieve net zero emissions in the coming decades. Another major player is POSCO International in South Korea, which is advancing its steelmaking technology by heavily investing in low-carbon methods, including hydrogen-based ironmaking and renewable energy systems. Even smaller nations are getting involved. Bahrain Steel, for example, is supporting low-emission iron ore projects by supplying high-quality pellets suitable for green steel production. Bahrain Steel's initiatives aim to complement global decarbonization efforts and align with the growing demand for low-carbon steel inputs. The steel industry is making major steps towards sustainability with hydrogen-based technologies and electric arc furnaces powered by renewables showing us a path to near-zero emissions. The combination of startups and established companies investing in green steel could lead to a complete transformation of the steelmaking process in the coming years. It's not just about the technology. Consumer demand is driving the shift toward green steel too. Big companies like Volvo and Mercedes-Benz are committing to using green steel in their vehicles. Volvo even produced the world's first vehicle made with fossil-free steel from Swedish startup SSAB. In construction, Skanska, one of the world's largest construction firms, is exploring green steel for its projects. Renewable energy companies like Vestas are incorporating green steel into wind turbines to reduce supply chain emissions. Even IKEA is looking into green steel for furniture as part of its climate goals. With businesses and governments backing green steel, the momentum is building for a more sustainable future in steelmaking.